Hey guys, Bitter Steel here, back with another video, and today, today we do another guide. We will be playing as Lithuania, and we are going for the This Is Lit achievement, control the capital of all our neighbors, and while we're at it, maybe we can get, it has my name on it as well, conquer the entire Baltic coastline, so let's go. Of course, Iron Man mode on, with historical AI focuses on, and let's see if we can do this. Now the Lithuanian focus tree is ridiculously overpowered and let's get right into building that power base by reconvening the Samos. Let's get ourselves a king. Now as for research, I'm going with the basics, just the usual opener of engineering and production. Uh, one thing you do want to get early is fighters and casts. Air is so important this update. I would not go for tanks right away. If you get a decent military base later on, sure, tanks could work. But I think uh, I'm not going to get tanks early on. You can group up the military under a field marshal. Fortunately, we have a field marshal and a couple of decent generals. And we'll just park them on the Estonian border. No, wait, Latvian border. As for production, add that second military infantry equipment for free efficiency. And after that, we'll see what we can make. Maybe some artillery. And build a couple of mills. We will definitely need military factories. That's pretty much all there is to it. Reconvene the Samas, Lithuanian preservationism, exile Voldemaras, and then root out the Iron Wolves. That is our first course of action. Now, to get our first achievement, we'll need to occupy the capitals of Estonia, Latvia, Poland, and Germany. Three of those are easy. One of those is a bit of a challenge, but certainly no problem for mighty Lithuania. I'm not going to use this political power just yet, uh, until we've done Lithuanian preservationism. That opens up a couple of good advisors and reduces the cost for changing out these laws. Now, I could be wrong, but what I like to do first is to pick up the agricultural nationalist first, and then use him to get a cheap civilian economy up to partial mobilization and then go up to free trade. On the cheapo, I'll, again, I, I could totally be wrong and that might not be a good pick. Let me know in the comments. I've also converted my entire army to my basic infantry template. I just like to standardize my infantry and have them exercise a little. And yes, I know we don't have nearly enough manpower for this. It's fine. It's fine. And with Lithuanian preservationism, we can get the agricultural nationalists and get the war economy on the cheap. No, partial mobilization on the cheap doesn't really do much for our tiny economy. I could just get free trade first. Then again, that doesn't do much either. I'll just get partial mobilization and we can get free trade soon enough. As for focuses, the next ones are Voldemaras and root out the Iron Wolf. And that will get rid of this negative national spirit. The darn Iron Wolves are a problem. As for industry, I like going concentrated because we will be working with a relatively small industrial base for quite a while. Uh, this burst could be good. It's going to be up to you, really. It doesn't really matter that much anymore. And free trade. Nice bonuses. Very nice bonuses. Well, at least we have three civilian factories working now. Now, we are relatively caught up on the industry side of things. I am working on engineering. Radio, very important. Radar, also very important. But what is most important in this entire patch currently, right now, is air. So I want fighters and I want cast and I want them soon. Now, next up for political power, what we could do is hold on and save up for the aircraft designer. Very helpful in getting better fighters. Or you could get military high command early and start getting some very valuable military experience. Uh, I am not quite sure which is the most optimal, but I do think getting a military high command early tends to be the best. Experience is very, very valuable these days. Okay, with the Iron Wolves rooted out, we can continue. We will now get a king for our people and work our way down here to supporting monarchism in Poland. We are going to make our country significantly larger for a very small cost. Long live the king, King Mindaugas III. Uh, I get a noble class first because it gives us more political power gain and then we get the established royal guards. Also gonna hoard a bit of political power because we need some when we start supporting monarchism in Poland. Now we do have a bit of time before we get there though, so we might as well just spend some more political power, either beefing up the army with more army uh, experience or we get some air experience. Doesn't really matter which you prefer. I tend to go with the uh, air experience. We can get some to improve our airplanes later on as well. And let's add some fighters to the queue. We'll need a lot of air to uh, deal with the Soviets and the Germans eventually. And with the presidency abolished, we now have a king truly in control of this country. Let's continue to support monarchism in Poland. This will unlock decisions that we can use to flip Poland to our side, and we will be the Lithuanian-Polish Commonwealth. Now I am hoarding a bit of political power uh, for this focus to finish, because I will be spending quite a bit of it getting Poland under our control. So make sure you do have a nice little stockpile going for this. 
There we go, monarchism in Poland. Now we cannot continue on to the Kingdom of Poland until we have dealt with the Polish issue. I'm also not going to arm monarchists, because I don't have to, it's it's not required, and claim Livonia can wait until we have Poland under our control. Now what we could do is either look at this branch here, the nation and its power and royal reform. These are pretty good. Uh, a lot of daily political power here, as well as some nice bonuses to the army, which definitely needs a little bit of beefing up. Or we could take a look at the industry first, which is what I'm going to do, I think. A little bit of industry early tends to win out in the end. Now, as for our decisions, we're going to start propagandizing monarchist settlement in Poland, and we're going to do this until our claim is around 100. So focus on getting monarchist sentiment, invest in Poland, maybe sway some Polish generals. It's going to depend on how you want to spend your political power and your command power. Just make sure to have at least 80% claim strength. You need that to be able to take the next focus causing Poland to either accept or not, uh, higher is better. One thing Lithuania does not start with is trucks, so you might want to research these a uh, little earlier than other countries. And we also do not start with trains research, and we're gonna need a couple to keep our logistics running. Now we have two of these events still running, that will bring us up to 90. So I'll wait eight days, and that should allow me to pick, where are we, the Kingdom of Poland. We need 80 to start that, so let's wait a little bit. There we go, we should be able to pick the Kingdom of Poland. This will start a little bit of an event chain in Poland itself, and depending on how high support is, either they will submit to us or they'll have a little bit of a civil war, with the outcome being determined by how strong our claim is. So naturally, we would like this claim to be a little tougher. So I'll just give one more event to go, and together that should put it up to 100. So either there will be minimal resistance, or they'll just flip completely. There we go, there has been a little bit of a civil war in Poland. But as you can see, uh, our side here is uh, doing quite a lot better than um, Ignacy's side. So this should be over soon. You can either wait the 10 days and see where it goes, or just pick a short focus. I'm gonna wait a little bit. Shouldn't be too long before these blobs get deleted. There we go, that settles the matter, and we didn't waste any time. Time to restore the Commonwealth. That will allow us to absorb the Kingdom of Poland, and finally make Lithuania big again. There we go, the Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth is reborn, and we inherit all of Poland's supplies and all of Poland's troops. Time to spread these out over our armies. Now I do like standardizing my army, so... I'm gonna do that, uh, now we just draw up on the Lithuanian, no, Latvian border, because they will be our next target, we will claim Livonia. And we'll put that Polish industry to good work, I like to start making airplanes early, and artillery as well, as for infantry equipment, support equipment, we'll need all of those naturally. Not to mention trains, we got a couple of trains from the Poles, but we'll need more later on. Now, as for political power at this time, choose whatever you want. Uh, it's not a bad idea to keep beefing up the military with the artillery expert or a chief of the army. A military theorist is also very valuable, so we can start work on our doctrines. Uh, but other things like design companies for our aircraft, etc. are also good picks. I'm not gonna tell you what to do, I'd say you're free to pick whatever you want. Personally, I am going with the military theorist. I want to get my doctrine work uh, in soon. Oh, now we have control of Wilno here, Vilnius. We can move our capital there for some free stability. The historical capital of Lithuania is back, baby. Also going to start changing our divisions up a little bit. I've simply added some support artillery to add a little bit of bite to our basic template. This will do for now. Uh, later on, I am also going to add a single artillery regiment to this, and I should be training more divisions. All right, we have done claim Livonia. We have our opportunity to seize the land from our neighbors. So we'll simply declare both of these wars simultaneously. It's easy peasy, lemon squeezy, just battle plan your way to victory. As for focuses, we need to prepare for the coming of the Soviets. Good options here are picking royal reform and military budget, if you haven't already, or we do have about a year's time. Spend some time building up here, developing natural resources to get rid of the negatives from agrarian society, or Axis investments and adopting Axis war economics. This gives you a free or rather cheap war economy. Or you can go with the allies and get some stuff here. The choice is yours, really. I'm gonna get myself a bit of a war economy from this guy. As for the Baltics, yeah, we simply we simply overrun them. It's easy. There goes Latvia, great. Take all states. And Estonia is even easier. There we go, we have everything we need. 
And now we can just wait for the Soviets to arrive. Now, Germany is going to demand Memel. You could say no. If you feel confident that you can take on Germany and the Soviets or defeat Germany before the Soviets demand their pound of flesh, be my guest. I'm going to make this guide in the assumption that you're not that confident. So we will simply prepare and build up for the eventual arrival of that Soviet ultimatum. Another good idea while you're preparing for the Soviet arrival is to make sure the railway system is up to the task. We will need a lot of supply for the troops, make sure the railway can actually handle it. Fortunately, railways are relatively cheap, but you do need to build them on time before the enemy constantly bombs them. I'm also going to make sure to take a little trip here to Baltic School of Aviation once I've gotten rid of most of my debuffs. Mostly because I very much like the research bonus for aircraft that will allow us to get fighter 2s and cast 2s relatively early. But again, before the Soviets arrive, don't forget to pick up these. The nation and its power, royal reform, mostly to get rid of this pretty terrible debuff. It's not going to break the bank, but it is annoying. I've also gone ahead and deployed 12 divisions to serve as port guards. The Soviet AI really loves to naval invade, so be prepared for that. Now, with no step back, the Soviets have gotten a lot better, well, somewhat overpowered actually, at countering your spies. One way to deal with that is get yourself localized training center first and make sure you can recruit a Soviet spy. They have the least chance of getting caught. It's pretty much the only way you can reliably build an espionage network in the Soviet Union. And Germany demands Memel. Now, if you are feeling confident, like I said, you can pretty much resist them at this point and team up with what's left of Czechoslovakia and France and try to fight off the German menace. You should be able to, but be aware, there's a big red enemy to your east that will also come in a couple of months. Now, I'm going to assume you're not that comfortable with it and we will simply hand over Memel. It's one port. Do we really care about one port? No, we do not. We just buy ourselves a little more time to get ready for the Soviet Union. And while we're waiting for that to happen, uh, I am recruiting a couple of fresh divisions. This is a template I've been meaning to test out. 24 combat with motorized, with motorized artillery. I know, I know, it looks incredibly stupid. I just want to see if it works. I'm very eager to find out if I can actually do something with this. I've been trying out different strategies just to see what sticks, you know? Just gotta experiment sometimes. You definitely don't need these guys though. That's, that's just my little experiment here. You're pretty much good to go if you maintain a template a bit like this, add one more artillery battalion to it and you're good to go. You can hold that line indefinitely with uh, three or probably four armies just holding off the Soviets until they are bled dry and if you have yourself a little bit of air support, nothing can really go wrong here. Okay, I've recruited my first Soviet spy, so uh, let's see if she gets caught immediately. Oh, and uh, with us giving up Memel and Poland no longer existing, Germany starts doing weird things. They bypass Danzig or war, they will not ask you for Danzig. Instead, they will go straight to around the Maginot, which means they'll declare on the Low Countries, then they'll fight the French and the Czechoslovaks, and World War II essentially still happens, but you don't have to worry about it. They will not come for your Danzig. While I prepare for the eventual arrival of the Soviets, I'm not going to tell you what focuses I'm taking. I'm mostly going to make sure I get royal reform to make my army not suck. Uh, there's some good stuff in this branch, some advisors under here, and all the way to the left here, you have plenty of opportunities to beef up your army. You'll not get all of them done before the Soviets arrive, but you can keep taking them as the Soviets are pounding your lines. By this point, you should be more than ready to hold them off. Of course, if you can recruit more divisions, that's even better. All right, there goes the molotov ribbentrop Pact. That means the Soviets are justifying and they will come for us in either 275 days if this finishes manually or they'll throw out an event demanding our submission, to which, of course, we will say no thank you. But we are thoroughly on the clock now. Uh, if, unlike me, you don't want to experiment with these uh, funky little motorized divisions, just build up at least four armies of infantry to hold this and let the Soviets grind into you until they are done and dusted and you can start a little bit of a counterattack should be relatively easy if you can maintain some sort of air power or if you wait long enough Germany will eventually start Operation Barbarossa and you can just piggyback off that. Now for doctrine if you're going for the purely defensive approach grand battle plan will work fine. I would not recommend mass assault. Superior firepower has the numbers it will do the most damage overall or if you really want to play with tanks I suppose mobile warfare could be handy. It might actually uh, end up being pretty good for my little truck escapade it does have a lot of boosts to motorized here uh but i don't think uh, 
I'm gonna be wild here. I recommend you take superior firepower or ground battle plan, but I'm gonna be wild in this run. I'm going mobile warfare. The Polish wing, well, Lithuanian wing dasars will ride in trucks this time. Hey, great success. We've prepared our first collaboration government. So yeah, I'm just using this Soviet spy to continuously build up a spy network. It's, it's not great, but I could send my second guy in. Chances are he, he will get caught. This guy is just a puny Polish Lithuanian and uh, the Soviet NKVD, in fact, is quite adept at catching spies. Oh, there we go. Soviets have issued their ultimate made him well we are not going to end the game here we will have to fight for our very lives the soviets are going to declare war on us and well hopefully my little gambit here with these ridiculous motorized divisions doesn't end up biting me in the ass tomorrow and after a short break i'm back i am sick as a dog so i don't really remember what i was doing here right Ah, I'm waiting for the Soviets to declare on me. Okay. I'm also making sure all my hubs along the uh, front line are being fully motorized. Yes, I know that you can use this button, but for some reason I'm having some issues with it where it doesn't properly activate the hubs. So I'm just going to do it manually and, and see how it goes throughout the run. I am very curious to see how this plays out. I'm going to give my guy defensive doctrine as well. A little bit of extra entrenchment might help. Just going to make a quick check of my air. Make sure all airplanes are set to interception. Uh, you could try air superiority, but I tend to find interception works better. The Soviets start out trying to just completely bomb you into the ground. Uh, if you can prevent that, your front line has a much better chance of holding. Of course, get all your cast deployed and try to have a party here. Soviets will uh, have a terrible, terrible time trying to invade us now. Oh, there's the Soviet declaration. Let's see if we can end this before my voice completely gives out. What I'm going to do is weather the initial assault. Yes, they're all red, doesn't matter. Uh, they will turn green as my cast gets involved in the fight. What I'm going to do with these fast units is try a series of sickle cuts around this area, destroy the pockets, and then make lightning strikes on the Soviet supply hubs closest to the front that would be what is this Z Zithomir, Zitomir, uh, Minsk and there's one up here Pskov I'll try and strike at those first right after I finish my sickle cut here and keep the game speed real real low yeah that's a lot of Soviet pressure but yeah bubbles are turning green we should be able to hold this tile does tend to get in a lot of trouble uh, we'll see I've also redeployed my airplanes away from that airfield because the AI tends to take that. A lot of bombing, but Cass is doing the Lord's work. Let's also immediately go up to extensive conscription and recruit some more troops. I would like a couple of extra divisions to man the front, so another full army of our regular troops, assuming we can ever get the equipment. Quite short in artillery. And our operation cut up the Soviet Union has begun. My motorized is already breaking out. First order of business here is to simply cut off these troops, destroy them, and secure the supply hubs. And we'll just go around the enemy if we can't go through them. And with that, we've taken the hub at Venezia and cut off these army units. Destroy them as quickly as possible. We'll need to get the railroad here. After that, I could either rush towards the coast, but that makes my front line a little bit too long. So I think I will focus on trying to take the hub at Zitomir, uh, Minsk next, and then Pskov. And that should see the Russians out of supply along the entire front. And then we'll see if I can use these motorized units for some clever signal cuts. Soviets do love their logistical bombing though, so expect to lose some trucks and some trains. Uh, your air power should be able to at least mitigate the losses, but uh, yeah, be prepared to build trains and trucks. Also best trade for some oil because you don't have any. Fortunately, your friends in Romania and Iran do. And we're blitzing through the front lines with these motorized units. God, I love this division. We can take the hub at Zithomir. That is the entire southern flank uh, all the way up to Kiev deprived of supply. All right, great. I could do more clever maneuvering with these trucks, but uh, gotta keep an eye on my fuel. I just want to secure my front before I make any absurd or really crazy moves. That's bad. Soviets have managed to push us at Narva. Uh, I'm gonna have to counterattack there. I'll just deploy these guys. I know they're out of equipment. It's fine. It's fine. It doesn't matter at all. With these additional troops, the front line should be more than capable of holding. I just wish I had a little bit more equipment, but uh, yeah, industry kind of sort of lacking. You could always ask your friends in Germany if they want to send you stuff. Usually they'd be okay to do so if they're fighting the Soviets as well, but eh, they want to get your opinion up first. At least happy to send us guns though. Bulgaria as well. All right, gonna see if I can launch a strike on Minsk by not just attacking the city. I'm gonna try and move through the plains just south of it and cut the railway. 
That should cut off Minsk as well, and then maybe I can surround it and take it like that. Like, the plane tiles should give my uh, motorized units all the speed they need to make something happen here. Just wish I had more oil, though. That's always an issue if you're playing as a minor nation. Oil, you never really get enough of it. Once the motorized have broken through, though, they, they really get going. So just cut the railway line, and that should cut all supply to the Minsk hub. Oh wait, they have a second railway. Uh, so yeah, maybe just keep driving a couple more tiles. Mogilev, okay. Right, time to go up to total mobilization. And once we get the political power, I'm gonna get women in the workforce though, because I don't want to give up too much of my manpower. Anyway, Soviets really aren't getting anywhere, and we are slowly but surely cutting off the supply to their front line. And yes, I know, my motorized tactic here, probably not optimal. Still, a lot more fun than just having infantry walk forward under cast cover, I'll tell you that. Soviets fighting Finland as well. I don't know if that is the best course of action right now, Stalin, but... And with that, we have Minsk. Okay, so we've got uh, most of the supply hubs down here. Well, they, they still have a couple, but we're doing well, we're doing well. Uh, yeah, Soviets really not doing very well, are they? Sure, they can bully Finland, but mighty Lithuania, not so easy. I'm gonna have to halt my glorious offensive because I am a Incredibly out of oil, so I'm gonna redeploy these guys uh, probably somewhere in the south. Maybe if I can break through here and rush towards Dnipropetrovsk, I could get a great encirclement around here. Or if I just run along the river here, I can push them all back into Odessa. Just many opportunities, but I need oil first, so I'm just gonna pull my guys back and prepare for the next strike. Gotta say, I, I thought we would be doing terrible. I'm actually enjoying this, and even though it's not optimal, it's fun. That's what matters. Oh, I love these stupid motorized breakthroughs because they work. They're so stupid, but they work. If I can get my speed up, I'm gonna rush down to Mikolaev and cut off the entire Odessa pocket and collapse that as quickly as possible. Now, I do need to be careful here that I don't overextend, though. Gotta keep an eye on the rest of the front, but everything seems to be holding. Quite well. Just the air is a bit of an issue, but I'm slowly whittling down the Soviet Air Force. Fuel though, that fuel. And with that, I think we've got the entire Odessa pocket cut off. Gotta quickly collapse that with the motorized and the front line is looking a lot spicier. Yeah, even if the Germans wanna come in and do their little Barbarossa, they'll have to go through our territory, provided we let them in, and we will get all of the gains. I am gonna need to beef up my industry though, cause uh, this is not looking too good. AI is a lot more proactive in trying to break out from encirclements though, because look at the amount of pressure they're putting on here. They're pulling troops away from a lot of the front, just so they can mass them here and try and break this. Uh, I, I like that in that it makes the AI a little more challenging. I don't like that in that it makes it a lot harder to get juicy pockets. Oh, it looks like they actually might break out of this. Yeah, they're really, really massing their strongest troops on the weakest point of my line, annoyingly. Um, I can't stop that right now. I, I don't have the units, so maybe I can issue a last stand here. I don't know. I think it's worth it. We could just crack them here, though. That will be a lot of the visions gone. 12 seconds later. Oh, God, no. Okay, halt, halt this. Okay, so, fucked up. Of course I fucked up. It's it's, uh, it's a trend today. They broke out because I wasn't paying attention. I like this new AI in that it's challenging to play against. I don't like just how aggressive it is. So it doesn't help that we are extremely overstretched right now. Uh, this is unfortunate. I would have liked a, a nice... A nice big pocket there, but don't think that's gonna happen. I'll just I'll just pull back, ease off, and we'll see what happens. Maybe I can redeploy and try something later. I do feel a bit stupid though. If I had just paid attention there, I could have closed this, but no. Now they're gonna push me back because I, I am quite quite overextended. Oh, and they've beaten Finland, so yeah, they're gonna they're gonna come for just just fall back, fall back. We'll try again later. Yeah, as expected, they're they're striking back quite hard here in the south with those troops they freed up from Finland, but uh, it's gonna be too little too late for the Soviets uh, at this point. I can still easily defeat them. Even if I just sit here and wait for the Germans to attack, I can give either Germany military access or I could temporarily join the Axis and we can just steamroll the Soviets. I, I have bled them quite extensively. Oh, I would have thought this would have been worse. 
Yeah, if I had closed that pocket, I would have bled them extensively. Alas, mistakes were made. It's like the AI knows what I'm trying to do here. They've really stacked the south now. I was gonna say the rest of the line is fairly thin, but it seems they've just been redeploying troops all over the place. I'm still not very impressed by the Soviet army, so no, not really impressed at all. Yeah, they're really running out of equipment. Just look at all these yellow bars. What even is the Soviet industry like? They've got manpower, but they hardly have factories. They're already on surface by requirement. Oh, time for another collaboration government while I'm here. Oh boy, they've really, really stacked Kiev. Uh, I think Georgi Zukov knows what I'm trying to do here. I need to take Kiev to supply these troops here in the south properly and they just, they know. And they are hammering my lines with force attacks now, trying to push me back while I still don't have sufficient supply in the region. It's, it's annoying. I like the challenge, but it's annoying. So annoying. Oh, there's just so many troops here. I need to take Kiev to continue my advance because there's there's no supply down south here until we take Odessa and that is really what killed my first offensive. Uh, it stalled here because we did not get any supply hubs in the region. The Soviets still had a naval link here. Oh but we're taking Kiev now. Oh we got Kiev. Okay with Kiev in our hands that does deprive the Soviets of most of the supply in the region now except for this uh, this tile here and it should enable us to start our own offensive operations against the Soviet army. Oh, was waiting for that. And while we're doing this fighting, I'm, I'm still abusing Lend-Lease. Germany is willing to send me guns, artillery, support equipment, so I'm just gonna keep asking for it. If they'll give it to me, fine, because I'm gonna use that against you next, Germany. Well, we've done it again. Created the same old encircle as last time. Hopefully we can actually close it this time. We do have supply in the region now. Th that tends to help. Oh yeah, this is already going a lot smoother than last time. Just rush to Odessa, take the port, and we can close this once and for all. Okay, with Odessa in our hands, just mop up now. That's a good amount of Soviet divisions we've encircled here. It's, it's not uh, gonna break their backs, but hey, it's better than nothing. Well, if you look at the front now, Soviets are pretty much defeated. Like, most of their strength bars are not even full anymore. They don't even have enough supply on most of the front line. We have taken the nearest supply hubs almost everywhere. Yeah, and I'm not even doing this all that well. Like I said, I'm a little sick still and not really on top of my game, but Soviets are defeated. Another collaboration government is a happening. Once that one finishes, uh, I think we can capitulate them if we drive to Berlin, Moscow and Leningrad. No, wait. <laughs> Leningrad, Moscow, and Stalingrad. And my motorized is pretty much unstoppable at this point. I can drive wherever I want to. Soviet army's spent. They've got nothing left. And voila, another pocket. Quick and dirty, but it works. Yeah, Soviet losses are really starting to tell now. Did not expect Romania to actually give up Bessarabia like that. Uh, that's annoying. I am in the middle of an attempted encirclement here. Kind of kind of ruining my day here, Romania. Kind of ruining my day. Um, wow, that certainly triggered the AI into doing something. Um, they're suddenly counterattacking everywhere with forced attacks. I don't know why the AI does this, but every now and then they become hyper aggressive, like absolutely balls to the walls, insanely aggressive and just push, 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 push everywhere with forced attack and I don't know why because it doesn't make any sense. You're not gonna get anywhere. I guess they did manage to successfully stop my en attempted encirclement here. That's uh, annoying. We're gonna have to pull all these troops back. Oh well, we'll deal with it. It's it's still fine. I can probably hit go on the field marshal order and we can walk to Moscow by now. The Red Army is spent. They've got no equipment left. It's just, I wanna get cool pockets, man. Oh well, I got my pocket in the end. Managed to break through from the side of Narva this time. Clean that up and that's another bunch of units the Soviets are never going to see again. Yeah, it's, uh, it's quite a big bunch of units actually. Oh, Soviet Union. I think Stalin would have learned his lesson by now, but no. I still go wherever I want, do whatever I want with my motorized. And it's another section of the Red Army simply disappeared. I can just push up to Dnipropetrovsk. I can also take all the supply in the region away from- Oh, Stalin. Oh, Stalin. Not having a good day, are you? 
Now I can just right click wherever I want to go and my trucks will drive there because the Red Army is a ghost of its former self. Just uh, oh, oh, it looks like the Red Army actually has troops on Leningrad. That's new. I'd say that's a welcome surprise, but it's actually a bit of annoying. And Lithuania has taken Leningrad. Of course we have. Didn't expect anything less. Uh, I think we're done being nice to Mr. Stalin here. We never act for this. Lithuania just wanted to be left alone, but no, no. Stalin couldn't stop himself, so we will have to teach him a lesson. I'm cutting up the Red Army bit by bit, still trying to eh, more or less minimize our casualties because we still have a bigger dog we need to fight, but the Soviet Union's gone at this point. I, I don't see them coming back from this. We've destroyed most of their army. Uh, we've got, what is it, two levels of collaboration in them already? One level. I accidentally did a collaboration government in Germany. That was not what I wanted to do. Well, I guess we'll try for the Soviet Union again. But yeah, uh, Soviets are gone at this point. If you handle this a little better than I am, like I said, I'm still not quite healthy. Uh, you should be having no issues dealing with this at all. Ah, looks like Germany wants to come to the party as well. Little late there, Germany. Little late. I've uh, I've done pretty much all of the heavy lifting by now. If you want to make it easy on yourself, you can just give Germany military access and, and they'll help you push through the Soviet Union. You could even join the Axis if you are so inclined. I'm not going to do it. I'll just finish off the Soviets myself. Uh, I may have overextended my motorized here in the Caucasus a bit. Uh, yeah, I got a little cocky. Still fun though, just be able to run amok over the enemy army. They've got nothing to stop me. Except that, you know, once they, they actually respond, they, they do have stuff to stop me. <sighs> I got cocky. I do this to myself every time. I get cocky and I end up losing troops. So I've lost two divisions already. I'm about to lose the third just because I cannot just stick with the plan and make a steady advance. No, I gotta do big fancy moves that end up kicking my ass. Just reach. Treat! Stop being stupid. Yeah, this division's uh, lost. So that cost me three divisions. Boy, do I feel stupid. So yeah, as long as you don't do dumb stuff like myself, Soviets are easy enough to defeat. Uh, I'm a little salty. I lost those three divisions. I have nobody to blame for that but myself. That was just stupid. Uh, I've got my collaboration governments in the Soviet Union. I m My temper has gotten the better of me. I'm just gonna march to Moscow. I don't care anymore. I just want this to be over. We've killed most of the Soviet army on our own already, and they will surrender soon enough. Got two collaboration governments on them, it's fine. I can absorb the losses, it should be okay. And continue building up because we need to prepare for the Germans next. Oh, there we go. That's it. Soviet Union has capitulated, and we have it all to ourselves. There, that's our first peace deal. So I've puppeted the independent state of the Far East just to prevent Japan from messing with us, so they should be secure. I've just taken everything else. I, I don't have to. I could easily puppet the Soviet Union as well. But I, I know we get a bunch of cores from, which is it, this focus. And I, I don't know by heart which provinces become cores. And I just want to maximize everything. Besides, our compliance is high enough. Where is it? We've got, we're already at 75% compliance. It's fine. I mean, if we had gotten even another collaboration government, it would be at 90. So it's fine. It's fine. We can handle this. And now we just need to make sure we can handle the Germans when they come. So that is where the build-up goes next. We must prepare for the Reich. And to that end, I've also just puppeted Moldova here to block off the uh, Romanians, just so I don't have to worry about everything. So now we do a little bit of build-up to deal with the Axis, which means recruiting more troops, more troops, more troops. Now, one thing I did forget while I was doing this, we could have easily justified on Finland or Sweden while we were doing this. Uh, that could have gotten us easy occupation of the area. They would have probably flipped and joined the Soviet Union. We had not yet generated so much world tension that the Allies would have thrown out a guarantee. But we can still eat the Nordic countries later once we've dealt with Germany. We just need to occupy them. Now for Germany, all we really need to do is get our army in position, justify a war goal and declare. They're really not as strong as they seem, especially when you have the backing of the entire Russian industry uh, behind you, you'll be fine. Just we are going to make sure to deploy the troops we still have in the queue. I'm training a few more coastal guards, mostly for the Black Sea that we now need to guard as well, as well as a full infantry army to beef up our field marshal here on the German front lines. And we're going to fill out the offensive army with more motorized troops. Where are we? So I'm training a couple more of these guys. Fortunately, we can declare on Germany quite quickly if we wanted 
two thanks to our retake core state war goal. However, that does put us at odds with Japan. It's a risk I'm willing to take. We should be fine uh, when it comes to Japan. Ooh, it looks like they might be able to beat China though, so maybe we need to release another Republic here to block off Xinjiang. Yeah, they're in the Chinese United Front and they might capitulate. Who could I release here? Glorious Kazakhstan, perhaps. So I just released these three puppets, uh, Kyrgyzia, the Kazakhs and the Altai. Mostly the guard this flank. I, I don't want any nonsense. Once Japan capitulates the Chinese United Front, if it doesn't look like it's going to happen, there's no point to doing this. I, I just don't want to fight on this front as well. We've got armies in position, ready to overrun the Prussian pocket. The rest of the front is well and truly manned quite heavily. And I have air power in the region, at least in Western Poland, to fend off the German Air Force. Maybe I should put up a little bit more air power the other regions just to keep them from bombing me to smithereens. But I think I'll be justifying on the Germans. Now, Retake Core State takes only 15 days, so it's cool. It's cool. You could bypass the Japanese coming in if you want to by justifying on uh, the Hungarians or the Romanians or Bulgarians. But that gives Germany time to beef up its front line here. I don't want to give them that chance. Not that there's too much more beefing up to do but yeah i'm just gonna i'm just gonna go with this well time to hit them where it hurts let's see how this plays out just gonna declare yes i know the italians and the japanese are gonna come in not calling in any of my puppets so my eastern flank should remain safe and sound and let's focus on crushing the prussian pocket first this might actually be a little more difficult than i had anticipated they they did funnel quite a bit of troops in we'll see we'll see it's looking good i've got my air power up could join the allies if you wanted to might be an easy way to uh, quickly justify on, let's say, the Finns, join the Allies, and then eat Finland, and they get kicked from the Allies, and, and then you can just eat Sweden when you want to. I'm gonna hold off on that. Oh yeah, our air power is shredding the Germans. Oh, this feels almost unfair. How quickly we've been able to push them. Yeah, they're gonna feel this one. I just want these non-aggression pacts to go away. There will be aggression, boys. There will definitely be aggression. Look at that. The entire... Königsberg pockets overrun. There goes their entire Prussian force. Now, where do I want to attack? Well, the weakest bits first, so I guess I'll push up here through the Stettin area. They're not even daring to attack me along the front. Fine by me. Let's see if we can cut a hole through the Russian, oh, rather, German line here in Hinterpommern. Cut towards the coast, clean that pocket up, and continue moving forward. I mean, we're shredding their units, though. Ooh, they are hurting. And now we blitz through, quickly as we can. Keep this ball rolling. The rest of the front's holding easily real easy and we've got them encircled already great clean that pocket up and keep moving that's another what's that 15 divisions encircled and destroyed here oh the war hasn't even been going on for that long the amount of firepower these units bring to bear and they're so fast as well the enemy usually doesn't have enough time to respond i could just blitz my way through anything so what i've done is use this template I've added some support anti-tank and another motorized artillery. It brings them up to 27 combat width. I've given them to a general with the right stats. So he is a combined arms expert. I've also given him the military high command role combined arms expert. So yeah, I am very much ready for mobile warfare. I could start adding in some mechanized though, but that will slow my divisions down considerably. And I need a lot more mechanized to make that happen. It does seem like I find myself cut off from aluminum though. Uh... Yeah, I, I can't trade with anybody because our trade port goes through the Danish belts, which are now controlled by Germany. Minor downside. It's still okay. It's still okay. We can we can get by. I've already killed 850,000 Germans at the cost of uh, 96,000 Polish. So good odds so far. And just like with the Soviet Union, what I'm doing here is striking at their supply hubs, edging my way ever closer to the heartland. Uh, if you see an opportunity for an encirclement, take it, but you're primary goal is to take the supply hubs that's why i've taken the one here in gleivitz and i'm pushing towards breslau next and then we'll see where we can go from there also the south here they will be constantly bleeding themselves just look at the strength bars on these units this also gives opportunities for counterattacks because once you break through here like the romanians and hungarians really are not that much to look at. You can blitz through relatively easily. Oh, Germany, you're just bleeding yourself on my lines. Yeah, I've inflicted 2.1 million casualties for 260k on my end, and they're just trying to hammer through here. They're not gonna get anywhere. Uh, 
Oh well, it is what it is. I'll, I'll gladly take retarded AI sometimes. Now with Germany really massing up there to their north, I've decided to just cut south since most of these units are really weak. See if I can't deal with the Hungarians or Romanians first. I mean, if you just want to grind, you can probably push your way through Berlin relatively easily. I'm just trying to be clever about this and want to make use of my motorized. But again, the war is easy. You can let them bleed themselves on your line and then counterattack or make pockets of your own with like pincer movements and breakthroughs. Doesn't matter. You'll be fine. I'm curious to see just how long the Germans presume to keep this up because uh, yeah, those casualties are not really in your favor, Germany. This is just getting disgusting. 4.6, no, 4.5 million casualties to the Germans just by my doing. Ah, uh, Jesus Christ. We've been bleeding the axes dry. Well, well, we are running the risk now of dragging this into the really, really late game, so I'm just gonna start justifying. Ooh, greater commonwealth. That's nice. Yeah, this has gone on for long enough. I'm gonna start an offensive, just keep going. I wanna crush the Axis. Uh, I I'm bored. <laughs> this whole micro campaign was fun, but it's gone on for long enough. Now, just look, once we've created a breakthrough, just look what this motorized can do. It spreads like a tumor. The ally, the Axis can't redeploy quickly enough to stop me. Just gotta make sure we occupy Denmark while we're here. Don't wanna capitulate the Germans too quickly. We need all of the Baltic coast, and that includes Denmark. Well, there goes Germany. Once we made that breakthrough, whew, our motorized really went to town. Ah, all secure. Ooh, ooh, that's nasty. Don't think I like that. Don't think I like that at all. At any rate, we have at this point long ago completed This Is Lit. We occupy the capital of Germany and of course our Baltic neighbors. We've pretty much done it all. Now, if you also want This Has My Name on it, all you've got to do now is take care of the Swedish coastline and the Finnish coastline. Finland's easy enough. Uh, they might pick up a guarantee. If they do, either fight the allies for it. If they don't, well, they're free real estate and move on to Sweden. It's really not that difficult once you control the continent. Just take care of the axis, hover yourself with a shield of puppets if you can, and then just focus on taking out the Scandinavian countries. Remember, you only need to occupy the land. You don't need to own it. Now just get rid of the Italians and we're done here. And there goes Italy. Uh, did somebody become a major? Bulgaria? Seriously, Bulgaria is now a major. I'm not even gonna question it. Sure, the game says it is that they probably are. All right, fine. Who am I to question a video game? I had a little peek and I saw that the Finns still don't have a guarantee on them. We're almost done justifying. So I'm just gonna hold off on defeating Bulgaria. That might be what's stalling the allied guarantee from happening there. So I'm gonna hold off a little bit just to see if I can drag the Finns into this. 12 seconds later. Ah, they picked up a guarantee. That's ah, fine. I'll just crush the Axis first then. There goes Bulgaria and we're done here. Now what I'm gonna do is take my course from Germany. Oberschlesien, Niederschlesien, Ostmark, Hinterpommern. As for the rest, we're gonna try and cover ourselves with as many puppets as we can. Knowingly, the UK puppet of Germany. Would have liked to make a German puppet, but we have what we need. We have the German coastline. Uh, it's relatively easy to defend at this point, even against massive allied numbers, because I also have massive numbers. Well, with this disgusting masterpiece, that piece deal's done. So I've got Italy, I got Hungary, Romania, Bulgaria, got a very weird looking Austria here as well, just to, to block off as much of Czechoslovakia as I can. And uh, now all I've got to do is line up my army versus the inevitable front with the allies and wait for them to come to me. Germany guaranteeing the independence of Finland. Got a lot of balls there. Got a lot of balls. Don't think you'll be guaranteeing much of anything, Germany. All right. We have our justification on Finland. All we need to do now is take care of the Finns and the Swedes, and we have control of the entire Baltic coastline. I don't know if the Danish belts count, though. I should look that up. But Norway is a pushover. Don't call in your allies, and go, go, go. Motorized should be enough to clean this up. Hurrah! Finland, never join the faction. Don't know why. Uh, yes, so my plan to conquer Norway from the north was uh, probably a little misguided. It's it's pretty pretty mountainous. And there's not a lot of supply up there, so I, I could have done that one a little better. But it's it's going well. Norway has no army. They've been a government in exile for years now. They got no divisions, and the UK is a little busy getting their teeth kicked in in Europe to send anything that way. Fortunately, I am well protected by my shield of puppets. Well, Germany capitulated again. I do wonder why my puppet of Austria 
is giving military access to the Allies. Don't like that. Don't like that at all. Oh, I forgot about Turkey. Oh, that's a bit of a pickle. Now, just to knock out Sweden and we're done here. Should be easy enough. Yeah, it'll join the Allies, but it, it really doesn't matter. Oh, I love this motorized infantry. It's just so fast, the enemy doesn't doesn't really have the time to respond to them in any way. Just go wherever you want, whenever you want. Plus the amount of soft attack they have is just insane. I love this template. And there goes Sweden. And with that, we have also got, it has my name on it. Now that last bit is a bit convoluted and you don't need to do that this way if you don't feel like it. But you know, at the end of that, this is lit run. We were in a good position to do so. I hope you've enjoyed this video and I hope you enjoy the mess we are looking at here. If you did, leave a like, consider subscribing and hit that bell icon to be notified whenever I upload more content. Anyway, check out this next video. It's just for you. Goodbye.